Happy Saturday, everybody. I'm springing YouTube on. Happy Saturday, everybody. It is November the 6th, 2021, day 295 of year three of reading through the books of the law and the prophets and of the three years second day count, day 963. Today, guys, we're going to read Psalm 74 to 76, and then we're going to pick up what we left off in Caesar's Messiah yesterday on page 146. Finish right this. What? Not Caesar's. I know it. Caesar's Messiah. I caught myself. I watched the video yesterday. I caught myself saying uh, Caesar's Messiah towards the end of the video when I was ending it. <laughs> Not Caesar's Messiah. Shakespeare's Secret Messiah. I tend to do that time from time to time um, after we finish reading something. I'll name the previous book or the book that we um, just got finished reading like I did it a few times after we got done reading Legends of the Jews, too. Levine, hey, girl, hey. All right, y'all. So let's go ahead and do the Shema. Forgive me for my tardiness, y'all. Look, today I overslept. I was up last night, um, and I couldn't go to sleep because I was up working on some stuff. I figure, you know, sometimes I get like this burst of energy where I just can't sleep all night. And so I'll start working on some paperwork for the company, you know. And then once I start working on it, I don't want to break my train of thought and stuff while I'm because I'm flowing and getting it done. Yeah, before I know it, it was after three. Every Everybody was asleep. Everybody was asleep, you know. So nobody was here to disturb me. So I'm just working on contract paperwork and just, you know. Yeah, before I knew it, it was after three, you know. And I set my clock. And I actually, I set my clock and I put my headphones in my ears. Um, so I would hear it because if I have my headphones in my ears, it would seem to resound and shake my entire body. I didn't even hear that. I didn't even hear that. So, yeah. So, but I, I, I didn't hear it when it went off. I heard it after we were supposed to be live this morning. Trina, hey, girl, hey. Okay, y'all. So, the Shema. That's what I gotta do. Ooh. It's found in Deuteronomy. Chapter 6, starting at verse 3. Y'all y'all remember the spiel, right? Okay. Here, therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with you, and that you may increase mightily as Yahuwah, the mighty one of our fathers, has promised us in a land that flows with milk and honey. Here, O Israel, Yahuwah, our mighty one, he is one. He is one. And you shall love Yahuwah, your mighty one, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words, which I command you this day, shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children. And shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gates. And you who have commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear you who are our mighty one, for our good always, that he... Excuse me, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before Yahuwah, our mighty one, as he has commanded us. I left my bottle of water. I was just drinking it. That's why I was saving for y'all. I'm sorry. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me move this out of the way. Change that. Anybody spot the new moon last night? I didn't. I didn't spot it because I was in an appointment and I didn't get out too late. And so by the time I got out, you know, it had already uh, come and gone. If it showed, but I did check last night and there were no reports yet. Matter of fact, let me check. Let me check before I start reading. 
Moona Corona Mix. Let me check the website. Let's see. Yes, it showed. Yep, it was confirmed. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, yeah. Okay, sightings based on, yep, sightings based on eyewitness reports without regard to their personal beliefs or affliction. I'm sorry, affiliations. Steps are taken to assure reports are accurate and truthful. Okay. Yeah, so. But. Well, Texas is always one of the first ones to show. So it was spotted in Durban, South Africa, Abilene, Texas, and Cur Town, Hawaii. Let me check a little bit later because sometimes they don't have all the um, names of the places who reported. But it said Israel had no observers report sightings today and will wait until the following day, November the 6th at the end of the 30th day there. Okay. All right. So I'm going to check again a little bit um, later today and see if they've updated the, um, the sightings, y'all. Okay. So let's get started with some. Auntie Belinda Brown. Hey, girl. Hey, Yahuwah is one. Shalom. Shalom. All right, y'all. Let me move this back out of the way. Okay. Psalm 74. A Psalm of Asaph's. Yesaf, shalom, shalom. Oh, Yah, why have you rejected us so long? Why is your anger so intense against the sheep against the sheep of your own pasture? Remember that we are the people you chose long ago, the tribe you redeemed as your own special possession. And remember Jerusalem, your home here on the earth. Walk through the awful ruins of the city. See how the enemy has destroyed your sanctuary. There, your enemies shouted their victorious battle cries. I'm sorry. There, your enemies shouted their victorious battle cries. There, they set up their battle standards. They swung their axes like woodcutters in a forest with axes and picks. They smashed the carved paneling. They burned your sanctuary to the ground. They defiled the place that bears your name. Then they thought, let's destroy everything. So they burnt down all the places where Yahuwah was worshipped. We no longer see your miraculous signs. All the prophets are gone, and no one can tell us when it will end. How long, O oh Yah, will you allow our enemies to insult you? Will you let them dishonor your name forever? Why do you hold back your strong right hand? Unleash your powerful fist and destroy them. Oh, Yah, you are my king from ages past, bringing salvation to the earth. You split the sea by your strength and smashed the heads of the sea monsters. You crushed the heads of Leviathan and let the desert animals eat him. You caused the springs and the streams to gush forth and you dried up rivers that never run dry. Both day and night belong to you. You made the starlight and the sun. You set the boundaries of the earth, and you made both summer and winter. See how these enemies insult you, O oh Yah. A foolish nation has dishonored your name. Don't let these wild beasts destroy your total doves. Don't forget your suffering people forever. Remember your covenant promises. For the land is full of darkness and violence. Don't let the downtrodden be humiliated again. Instead, let the poor and needy praise your name. Arise, O Yah, and defend your cause. Remember how these fools insult you all day long. Don't overlook what your enemies have said or their growing uproar. Next chapter, Psalm chapter 75. It's for the choir director. It's a psalm of Asaph. A song to be sung to the tune, Do Not Destroy. We thank you, O oh Yah. We give thanks because you are near. People everywhere tell of your wonderful deeds. Yahuwah says, At the time I have planned, I will bring justice against the wicked. When the earth quakes and its people live in turmoil, 
I am the one who keeps its foundations firm. I warned the proud, stop your boasting. I told the wicked, don't raise your fists. Don't raise your fists in defiance at the heavens or speak with such arrogance. For no one on earth, from east or west, or even from the wilderness, should raise a defiant fist. It is Yah alone who judges. He decides who will rise and who will fall. For Yahuwah holds a cup in his hand that is full of foaming wine mixed with spices. He pours out the wine in judgment, and all the wicked must drink it, draining it to the dregs. But as for me... I will always proclaim what Yahuwah has done. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. For Yahuwah says, I will break the strength of the wicked, but I will increase the power of the godly. Last chapter for the day, y'all. Psalm chapter 76. It is also for the choir director. It is a psalm of Asaph, a song to be accompanied by stringed instruments. Yahuwah is honored in Judah. His name is great in Israel. Jerusalem is where he lives. Mount Zion is his home. For there he has broken the fiery arrows of the enemy, the shields and the swords and weapons of war. You are glorious and more majestic than the everlasting mountains. Our boldest enemies have been plundered. They lie before us in sleep of, in the sleep of death. No warrior could lift a hand against us. At the blast of your breath, O God of Jacob, their horses and chariots lay still. No wonder you are greatly feared. Who can stand before you when your anger explodes? For heaven, from heaven, you sentenced your enemies. The earth trembled and stood silent before you. You stand up to judge those who do evil, O Yah, and to rescue the oppressed of the earth. Human defiance only enhances your glory, for you use it as a weapon. Make vows to you who are your God and keep them. Let everyone bring tribute to the awesome one, for he breaks the pride of princes and the kings of the earth fear him. And that, my beautiful people, is our reading for today from the Holy Writ. So let us now pick up what we left off that. Oh, oh. Playing around, drop a pen. All right, y'all. Okay. Got my pen. Let's pick up what we left off. What's that? Page 146. Which is the rest. What's it? What did we say this was? Chapter 4, yes. We're learning about Shakespeare. Who she really is, right? Emilio Bassano. I'm going to adjust this. Okay. All right. So let's go back up. Let's go back up. Okay. Emiliana Bassano was born in London to Margaret Johnson and Baptista. And Baptista was generally not. What? Oh, okay. I, I was reading it like too fast. Not with the appropriate space so you can get it. Okay. Emiliana Bassano was, I'm sorry, Emilia Bassano was born in London to Margaret Johnson and Baptista was generally acknowledged as Johnson's domestic partner, the father of the child. In his will, Baptista referred to Margaret as my reputed wife, a hedged statement that might conceivably have been related to religious differences. However, Margaret's will clearly identified Baptista as her husband. Margaret Johnson apparently had close relationships with the members of the radical Protestant movement, which might have complemented the possibly radical Jewish viewpoint coming out of the Bassano side of the family. Reference 60. Emilia was christened at St. Boltov, Bishopgate, the London neighborhood where foreign musicians and theater folk lived on January 27th, 1569. That's reference 61. Jake, shalom, shalom. There is a court document 
given below, showing that Emilia's uncles had a confrontation with the authorities in which they were described as being black in skin color and of talking back sharply to the sheriff. Yeah, that would do. That, that, that would do. Quote, on 22 September, well, on the 22nd of September, 1584, John Spencer, a former sheriff of London, asked by the Crown to account for his behavior towards Arthur Edward I and Geronimo II Bassano, I'm sorry, Bassano, which were committed to ward or prison for the misdemeanor, twice went out of his way to point out that neither he nor any of his fellow law officers knew the identity of the men they were arresting. The occasion was a street skirmish caused by the blocking up of the street by the authorities, which angered the residents who began dismantling the blockage, end quote. At this point, the Bassanos came near to the site and stayed talking and looking at the work until they, too, were ordered to leave. They effed soon, it says effed, they effed soon's very obstinately refused, saying to Spencer, this is the queen's ground and we will stand here. When told that if they would not depart by fair means, they would be sent to ward. One of them, a little black man who was booted, answered in a very despiteful manner saying, send us to ward. Thou were as good, be the words with reverence name, kiss our, etc. <laughs> And another of them, yeah, yeah, that was, <laughs> yeah. And another of them, being a tall black man, said, Sure, Spencer, we have as good friends in the court as thou hast, and better too. And that's reference 62. While the document may seem innocuous, it is absolutely critical to understanding the Shakespearean literature. The passage shows that though the Bassanos, swarthy, Sephardic Jews were routinely called black by the English, even though they were not of African Negro descent, Emilia was actually called the Moor by her family. This might mean that she had especially dark skin and been a and this might mean that she had especially dark skin and been a bright target for racial insults, or perhaps she and her family may have been especially conscious of the darkness of her skin in contrast to her in contrast to her English mother. The many Moors or Ethiopies of the play and the black mistress of the sonnets may be really may be readily explained as Emilia Bassano's response to English discrimination against blacks such as herself. Reference sixty three. Now, this is when this when when this is in the fifteen hundreds, right? Slavery, transatlantic, well, no, I take that back. The transatlantic slave trade started approximately 1619. But before the transatlantic slave trade, there was the Spanish Inquisition and also the, um, it, it was, it was three of them. They actually go together and they're spaced apart in some years. But what we only really hear about, um, is the start of everything in 1619 and although that's when that's when i would say the 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 last majority of it began as they began to disperse the blacks out right um but yeah it was a spanish you if you're looking at the transatlantic slave trade you absolutely must look at the spanish inquisition what was the other one i used to talk about them a lot early in the first year it was what was the third i ain't looked at it in so long i forgot the third one but anyway but it's three of them that go together and connect they they all connect right but i said all that to say that they was experiencing sometimes you'll hear old oh, race didn't really become a thing until you know after like the 16 19 or during that time but it, it was happening way before then right and she was born 
um, in the early, in 1548, right? So this right here, what we was just reading, this was happening in 1584, right? Okay, so I'll read this last sentence again. The many Moors or Ethiopians, remember also we learned, look, this is funny that he has this, this is correct information I was giving y'all. Remember when I was talking about the Moors and how um, they removed it from the, um, the Geneva version of the Bible, which is the 1500s, mind you. I, be I believe that particular version was 1599. King James really had an issue with it because it 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 went against what he thought should have been there. But King James was real spooky, scary, and superstitious and stuff too, and some other things. So he actually had people murdered for that particular version and a couple versions earlier that still had the truth of things in there when they were trying to change and whitewash not, i don't know that that's a good word but that's or change history to make it look like make it look a certain way um but this was this was during that time but in those versions the color of the original people who the, the Jews or the Hebrews really were is clear throughout all the earlier versions as they they refer when they refer to them, it said either more or black more, right? To be very specific. And it used both more and black more, right? But everywhere that they had more and black more, they replaced those words and put Ethiopian, right? We we talked about that in extent um sometime. Jay said, I just saw an interview where Kanye West, the rapper, said blacks are the tribe of Judah. I was shocked. The word is spreading like wildfire. Yeah, it it's being more um uh what's the word? More public, more public. I think is growing as fast as it is because of social media. But it was something really well known back in the day. It really was Marie Shabbat Shalom. It was really well known and kind of like if if you if you grew up in a place or an environment that didn't really talk about those things or really didn't have history, it would seem like it wasn't known, but it was really known. It, it was really well known by a lot of other people groups, but they took great strides in removing it and not showing who the people were to portray to you that uh, the current set of people that they called Jews was really the people, right? So it was so many shenanigans behind all of this just to push this certain narrative and they got the news stations and 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 media outlets pushing some of the same garbage to kind of keep the lie going, right? But... The truth is being revealed in social media and media nowadays too, right? In the age of social media, a lot of truths are being uncovered, right? But it's also being tainted by some nefarious people to where some people are still kind of like, what? All of this is garbage. Like, they don't know what's true and what's not true. But it's not it's not really hard to figure out if you just do, if you do more than surface level um, research. Wasn't King James black before the dispersion of the black man to the islands and the Americas? King James was a, a was very British as our monarchy still to this day. You know what? King James was black, right? <laughs> That's what's crazy. But King James was I hate to I hate to get into this. He was a uh, he was a uh, how can I say this? Let me say it in a way not to be derogatory. Yes. Yeah, I just say yes. He was. He was. Right? But, um... See, I'm trying to watch my words on how I say it. Because I could say something, but that, that would be really derogatory. He was, um... He was one of the more... Let's say one of the more fairer blacks... In, in skin complexion, so to speak, right? And not necessarily the... Trying to look, I'm trying to be politically correct. <laughs> I 
Let me keep reading. Yeah, let me just keep reading. Come, I might get myself in trouble. Because some things I really just don't want to be nice on. But some things I don't want to be nice, but I really want to share. But it's better that I just keep my mouth shut. Okay. The passage also sheds light on another important point. The relationship between the Bassanos and the nobility. Being both black and constantly under the threat of execution as secret pra as secret practitioners of Judaism, whether or not such an accusation was even true, the Bassanos played a high stakes game in the Elizabethan in Elizabethan England in order to survive such a hostile environment. They needed the protection of friends in the court. But how could such friends be obtained? To survive anywhere in Christendom, Jews needed skills that would make them valuable to those in power. This perhaps is why the, Bassan the Bassano family developed their instrument making and music playing talents. These were skills they could exchange with the nobility for money and a protected status. This intellectually driven but conspiratorial world was the environment from which Shakespeare sprang. Remember, we're still describing Emilia Bassano, right? You know, that's a really good that's a really good way of saying that yourself, right? He said swarthy is what they called them. Different from black, right? Yeah, swarthy and black, it, it's the same, but yeah, it, it's, um, yeah, in other words, lighter due to the mixing at the time. Yes. <laughs> Marie, that's funny. <laughs> Marie said he passed the paper bag test. He wouldn't be in the fields or he had the color of collection for the protection. Thank you. Thanks. See, y'all... Y'all here. Y'all here. I like the way y'all you worded that. Thank you, Marie. Thank you. Thank you. The British attitude towards dark skinned people during this era is also made clear in the following commission from the Queen to a merchant named Casper Van Zuden, which calls on him to arrange for the deportation from the country of the Negroes and Blackamoors that had crept into the realm. Reference 64. Quote, orders to expel Blackamoors and Negroes, 1601. Whereas the Queen's Majesty is discontented at the great number... Who? The way they spelt this is just almost like... <laughs> Now, you know, sometimes, look, here, here's okay. And I'm not trying to be vulgar for anybody who's here that's not my skin complexion, right? But the people of my hue would know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, so in here, they said, look. <laughs> when, okay, so it's different. It's different when black people amongst themselves refer to each other as nigger or nigger you 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 rarely hear black people calling each other nigger because that seems kind of more derogatory right shucks not not that it's any not that it's any better but you hear black black people even in jazz hey what's up my nigga you know it's it's all it's almost it's like they didn't turn the by word into a term of endearment, right? So we're not a fact. If, if people, some people wonder, well, y'all say it all the time. Ain't nobody, you know, even when we fighting or whatever, but it's, it, it's acceptable amongst our people. But somebody of another race said, it's like everybody stopped. <laughs> not just our race of people, but every other race. Like, <gasps> they said that. They're going to let them get away with that. I, and I said that because the way they spell nigger in here, <laughs> I don't know. It just, it made me feel a type of way when I saw it in the spelling. The spelling is different. They spell it N-E-G-A-R, right? And I don't know, for some reason, it just kind of, 
I don't, I don't know. Maybe we were trained that when, you know, cause the, the, the guy that, you know, he's, he's just repeating what was there, but I don't know. I can, I can still kind of tell that, that, you know, that's something that probably need to be worked out of me. Right. It's like when you hear somebody of a different race, it's like, we immediately take offense. I mean, we don't really, I mean, I guess, you know, it, we really get it. So, but anyway, I digress, but I bought it out. He spelled nigger wrong from the way we would normally spell it if we were to write it they spell it n-e-g-a-r okay let me just go back this is the order to expel the black amours and the negroes in 1601 whereas the queen's majesty is discontented at the great number of niggers and black amours which are crept into the realm since the troubles between her highness and the king of spain and are fostered here to the annoyance of her own people in order to discharge them out of the country, her majesty hath appointed Sip Casper Van Zuden, merchant of Lubeck, for their transportation. This is to require you to assist him to collect the, to collect the such Negroes and Blackamoors for this purpose. End quote. Oh, and Shayla Hager, hey, look, have y'all had a chance to go watch any of the movies by Shakespeare yet. The plays or listen to it. Um, if you haven't, if you get a chance, go watch it, y'all. Because if you haven't, you begin to understand more what he's saying. You will be able to see the language, the linkage um, with the era and the religious, political fighting and all the, those things going back and forth. It is abundant through Shakespeare's plays. And it's funny, which one was I watching? I was watching um, um, Othello, right? Is my mom here? If you go back and watch Othello, like the more modern version, if you watch the more modern version, they use more like uh, people would say like, black person today right but when they were saying it it was like Othello the Moor I'm like you might as well have said Othello the nigga <laughs> right but it was funny watching it because everywhere today like if it was more modern terms our day it wouldn't be more but you could tell every time they said it's Othello the black or Othello the Moor you know bringing um Clarity to who they was talking about. It, it was it was quite hilarious to me to watch that, and you will see you will kind of see that theme going throughout the um going throughout Shakespeare's plays and stuff to kind of bring out some things, right? So it's like some of the same stuff that we see happening today. It's been it's been happening for a very long time in regards to people of uh, darker hue, skin complexion. All right. Emilia's father died when she was seven and her family somehow arranged for her to be raised by Susan Wingfield, Countess of Kent and Margaret, Countess of Cumberland. Emilia wrote about their estate of Cookham Dean in her poem, The Description of Cook Ham. She was presumably educated along with the other girls of these noble households as she later became a tutor to the children of the nobility. It is difficult to speculate as how to Emilia was able to maintain her Jewish identity under such circumstances. However, if the other evidence of Emilia's authorship of Shakespeare that I have presented is deemed acceptable by the reader, then the Jewish agenda of the Shakespearean literature becomes very powerful evidence that Emilia indeed was able to retain her Jewish faith and identity. On the other hand, no other candidate for the authorship of the plays, and certainly not Shag Spear can explain this extensive Jewish content and considering her family's Jewish heritage, it is entirely credible that their conversion to Christianity was only a matter of conformance with the royal imperative of the time. At any rate, it is clear from the plays that Shakespeare learned to... Sp I'm sorry. At any rate, it is clear from the Shakespeare from the I'm getting tongue tied at any rate it is clear from the plays that Shakespeare 
learned to speak a number of languages. Emilia was a native English speaker, but might have been taught Italian and Hebrew by her father and family, and certainly would have studied Latin and French during her aristocratic upbringing. It is entirely possible that Emilia had the early training in a number of languages needed to become one of the most productive wordsmiths in history. Yo, look, let me tell you something. This has probably nothing to do with anything, but sometimes I am, um, when you listen to rappers of those who are able to put together songs with all these words. Now I, I read a lot and I love words and being able to, um, oh, I didn't, I'm getting sidetracked y'all. Look, they did. I'm gonna have to go watch that. I love Omar Epps. She said, pause. They recreate Othello. Yeah. Oh, 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 I think I remember that preview version. I'm going to have to go look at that. I'm going to add that to the list, y'all. Uh, Play. Oh, I'm going to have to go. Let me make myself a note. Thank you, Marie. Yes. Um, The one that I watched. Well, I put a couple different versions up there. A couple older ones. Um, But I really like the one with Lawrence Fishburne. You know, so probably... I'll probably like the one with Omar Epps even better. I'm going to see how they, I'm looking at all of them um, together and see if they change anything. But uh, so far, they kind of keep the same storyline and stuff, right? But if you can't, some people would rather watch the modern versions because the way they talk in the older versions is really the, they're, they're, it's like the thus thou arts and it's like if thou wouldst, you know, some people just, They'll be reading the movie the whole time because they have the English subtitles, so you can kind of just read along. But sometimes that's too much, right? And your brain will be on fire. So sometimes it's easier to watch <laughs> the ones that... And although they do it in newer versions, I don't know. I guess because of who plays it, it's easier to understand. And they did it in the one with Lawrence Fishburne, but that was easily understandable to me, you know. So, but yeah, I'm going to have to watch that one. But anyway, I said all that to say rappers back in the day they're they're they would be called wordsmiths the ones um the ones that um that are that that have this way with words and not just rappers um but just people who do a, a lot of talking and stuff i like that I, this has nothing to do with anything like i said i bought this out um because that's what i actually called it the other day and i didn't realize that um he used the same word in here, right? But he used it for those who, you know, who were really intellectuals and knew different languages and all that stuff. What are supposed to be seen in them? The, um, oh, you talking about seeing in the plays? In all of Shakespeare plays, Mackay Pfeiffer? Okay, Mackay Pfeiffer. Okay, I'm going to pull it up and see. Thanks, Marie. Um, but in the Shakespearean plays, you will see how this... It will, you will see how the thread, if you're familiar, first of all, let's just say this, you will see it and understand the thread in the Shakespearean plays if you're familiar with what Josephus and his family did with the New Testament. So the, remember Josephus, there was, Josephus, the New Testament was a spoof on Titus's campaign, right? But during that time, you had Shakespeare, Amelia Bassano with all these things going on. And her plays were a, were a, a spoof on a spoof, so to speak, if that makes sense. So, to whereas, um, um, Flavius Titus, not Flavius Titus, uh, Josephus <laughs> Flavius, where he, in all his literature, even in the New Testament, how he pretty much dumbed down like the Hebrews and made like uh, the Messiah, like pro-Roman and stuff with Jesus. Emiliano, um, Emilia Bassano, clearly they knew because they lived during that time and they knew that it was a spoof and kind of like a, an attack on her people. Her plays did pretty much the same thing, but flipped it. 
and did the attack on the Gentiles. And that was kind of explained a little bit too when we was going through the um, the beginning of this book. So when you read in the Shakespearean plays, now that we're familiar with Josephus and everything he's done, it's easy to kind of pick out some of those things that they were, that she was using to play on what he did to play and bring disgrace on her people. So yeah, that's what you should be seeing through uh, Shakespeare's plays. But if, if you're really not aware of what the New Testament is, you just won't get it. And it'll just be like good entertainment if you like that type of entertainment, right? Yeah. Okay. As a young woman, Amelia attended the court of Elizabeth I and shortly became the mistress to the queen's first cousin, Henry Carey, Lord Hudson, who was 45 years her senior. Hudson links Emilia to the world of Shakespeare's plays because his acting troupe performed many of them. She became pregnant at the age of 23 and then the, I'm sorry, she became pregnant at the age of 23 and then, as was routine with the pregnant mistresses of the lords in this era, was given a farewell and a stipend by Hudson. In October 1592, in October 1592, she married her cousin, Captain Alfonso Lanier, a Queens musician and volunteer Navy man. The Following the Queen's death, he moved into the service of James I. Emilia's relationship with Nicholas would have been the source of Emilia's knowledge of the arcane jargons of the British military and navy that found its way into the plays. So that kind of um that kind of answers some something we was talking about what we was talking about earlier about King James, right? He was, let me see, following the Queen's death, he moved into the service of James the First, right? And later they become King James, right? So Keep paying attention, y'all. Emilia's relationship with Nicholas would have been the source of Emilia's knowledge of the arcane jargons of the British military and navy that found its way into the place. Emilia consulted Dr. Simon Foreman, a physician and astrologer, in May 1597, hoping to learn if her husband would receive any preferment so that she might discover whether she should be a lady or no. She was then living in the fashionable era of Long Ditch, Westminster, next to Cannon Row. Foreman kept a diary describing his interactions with his clients. He found her high-minded, which meant either that he saw her as intelligent or that she was interested in the affairs of the arist aristocracy. Acris, acris, this is the way you say that. Aristocracy. Aristocracy. Yes, that's how I was trying to say it. Okay, aristocracy. Okay. He found her high-minded, which meant either that he saw her as intelligent or that she was interested in the affairs of the... And I forgot it again. Aristocracy. And mysteriously, he wrote that she hath something in mind that she would have done for her. She can hardly keep secret. He also noted her difficult life, stating, it seemeth she had ill fortune in her youth. Emilia again consulted Foreman in June of the same year. She complained that her husband had dealt hardly with her and spent and consumed her goods, presumably both the money she had inherited from her father as well as what she had saved from her allowance from Lord Hudson. She lied when Foreman asked her age, claiming to be 24 when she was actually 28. Look, I know this has nothing to do with anything either, but since they brought the point up, the more I learn and study, and as it, as even me and my family, we grow our personal wealth, I kind of understand, not, not that, I don't know, I ain't going to say not that I would have done the same thing, but I may have, but um, you know how they have arranged marriages, and they still do it in some places, they really do, like in overseas, they really have arranged marriages, right? It's probably a little more 
uh, I guess, modernized today where um, it's not just, huh, I'm marrying off my daughter to you, you know. But th the reason they did that, right, the reason they did that is because families who had great wealth wanted to keep their wealth, right? And so when they they marry off their daughters, um, the daughters, when they leave, they don't just, huh, take her, I'm glad she gone, right? No, she comes with wealth, right? A lot of times she, and you kind of see that through, not kind of, but you see that even through um, the uh, uh, the Old Testament. But it wasn't just our people that did that, right? There were, there were many other nationalities that did that who had built great worth by the time their children was of marriageable age, right? So if it's a, a man who's marrying, the female would be joined to the male side of family because the male, that's the, that's the namesake. He gets the inheritance, even if he's not the king or whatever, each son is left an inheritance, but also the women children as well. And although they don't necessarily, they stay in the family, but they don't stay in a family because her, she then takes the name of the man she's marrying and is now associated with their family. But when she goes, she also takes her wealth with her, right? Thank you, Marie. They did it because of financial wealth. So I can completely understand why they arrange marriages in a way that they did. And especially if you come from a family that had something and they had built wealth, they didn't want their children marrying peasants or beggarly and needy people because they their thoughts were that you come from money you need to be with somebody who come from money and understands money and knows how to keep money and know how to grow money not somebody that's living hand to mouth and spending every dime they get because if they do that eventually if they're stronger than you they're going to consume all the wealth that we've built up and given to you as an inheritance. And we don't want that. <laughs> What's love got to do with it, Marie? <laughs> exactly. What's love got to do? Got to do with it? Not a god darn thing. Absolutely nothing. Now, if y'all both pull and come from nothing and y'all build it together, okay, I, I, I can I get that, right? And sometimes people think that may happen for you. But that if that worked for you and your spouse, that may not necessarily happen for you and your children. So I would take the same mindset. Like I said, even as we're growing our family wealth, and we're by no means considered in a wealthy class, right? But we think about our children. And we have one that's married, right? So by the time he was married, you know, it we not, you know, it's like, okay, whatever. Y'all work this out together because we still trying to work this out ourselves. We'll, we'll teach y'all, you know, you mesh good together and you listen and you take sound advice. Okay, we can grow you up just like me and my husband kind of grown up in it, right? But as you begin to build that, it's, it becomes more of a, a fail safe and a protection because you really can't control anybody else in the upbringing of other people, which is why people look into other families okay who she come from who her mama her daddy what they do what they got going on she in debt like people checking credit scores like that's a real thing and i kind of agree with it now what's his credit score? what's her credit score like seriously because if her credit is trash <laughs> she gonna use up your credit and your tr your credit gonna be trash too right and and all 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 in the name of love right and when you do things listen when you there's a way to do things in love. Now, if you're going to do something in love, you should keep your senses about yourself, right? Don't be in love, then go completely stupid and blind. And now you living out on the street in a box under a bridge because love, just all we need is love. Whoever said that clearly was broke. <laughs> love will have us living under a bridge, starving, but we love each other. And our love going to only keep us alive for so long. And then we're going to die together. Right here in this box under the bridge. Love ain't got nothing to do with it. Now, love is icing on the cake. Love can be developed. Love can be destroyed. It can be, love can be manipulated. Love can be so many things. Right? But if you have a family, a mom and a dad, or whether you have one or the other, whatever, somebody that can give you a good financial education and you are financially literate, you can work out anything else in life. 
I truly believe that you really can, right? And if you're really wise in your dealings and how you deal with people, you'll begin to look at these things and you'll become very uh, selective about the group of people you hang around with. And thereby, you can kind of control the type of uh, people who will be drawn to you, right? And you can, you, there are some things that you can kind of do yourself, you know, to kind of keep that. So, and I was talking about that, about the arranged marriages, right? Because they were literally trying to protect their family's wealth, or protect the wealth that they had given to their daughter or whatever, right? So, that's why they have arranged marriages. And I think, I was like, as we're growing this, I'd be doggone if Bella married, not to be derogatory, but I'm like, I'd be doggone if she married some bum, broke without a job. He better be doing something with his life. Like, baby, this is what you need to be looking for. This, this, this. Same thing with our boys. Same thing with our boys. You know, she may be a sweet, nice, wholesome girl, but does she have brains? Can she balance a checkbook? Does she spend all her money? Is all her money on her back? right it's all her money on her back on her head and on her hands because if it is that's a red flag right not saying that she can't have those things but if she got money on her back and on her head and on her nails and she driving around in money right how is she living is she living in money too like if she driving this because some people they bling out and be all flashy with the cars but they live in the projects See, some ain't some some ain't right. I can just feel it down in my sha na na. <laughs> she driving a BMW, but she living a hood. Some ain't right. Either she is financially illiterate, or sis got a sugar daddy, a, a sugar daddy that's halfway stepping because a real sugar daddy would not have you living in squalor and have you riding around looking like the best thing since sliced bread, right? So her sugar daddy got problems too because a real good sugar daddy would not have you living in squalor and have you riding around looking like a million bucks. It needs to add up. You need to be living in a nice house that matches your nice car. All those things, red flags, you, you got to look at it. So, so she got to have brains or... And and don't marry for potential, right? If you marry for potential, the only time I would say you marry for potential when you got money is if you see the potentialities being played out and being walked in, right? Because unless you're just born into money, they, your parents have already worked it out, um, then you're going to have to kind of build. And you can see that even after about a, give it about a year, possibly two years, if they sit in the same spot, always complaining about what they don't got and they can never make ends meet, uh, let's revisit the plan you got, sis. Maybe, maybe your plan isn't sound. What are, you, what are you doing? Are you sticking to your plan? Right? So people with potential, you will see them making strides and moving forward. Right? So all, all of these, I said all that because I completely understand why they married their daughters off into other money. Uh. You're a noble. You're 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 a royal lineage. You need to marry somebody else from royal lineage, right? Have the same mindset, same goals, and things, right? And they and when it really comes down to it, the people just don't want their wealth squandered into nothingness. All the time they spent building up things, preparing it for their children's children and many generations. No, we people really they with that they're really worried about themselves and what they built the kingdom that they built and they don't want it torn down in one or two generations because you're illiterate right yeah yeah okay so in 1613 her husband died the same year that the last shakespearean play the two noble kinsmen was written Emilia now had to earn her own living since she no longer had the income from her husband's court musician's appointment and only a portion of the income he had derived from a monopoly on the weighing of hay and straw. She attempted to support herself as a tutor for the children of persons of worth and understanding. In 1617, she leased a new house for that purpose on St. Giles in the Fields, an aristocratic London suburb, she immediately became engaged in a series of lawsuits and countersuits relating to the building and a dispute with a relative over the income from the hay monopoly. 
Having lost most of her pupils, she left the St. Giles residence in 1619 without paying her midsummer rent, whereupon she was arrested. <laughs> okay, look, okay. <laughs> Marie, <laughs> she said potential means daydream vision. Talk to me when you made the blueprint with final physical construction. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. She appears again in the London legal records in 1635 at the age of 66, claiming that she was obliged to provide for two grandchildren and was in misery because she was being cheated out of her full entitlement to the income from the Hay royalties. The lawsuits continued for three years. She died in April 1645 at age 76, a pensioner meaning that she was possessed of some regular income. She had at least two children, the first presumably the son of Lord Hut Huns Hunsdon was named Henry and had been born early in 1593. She also had a daughter who died in infancy. The next section is the Bassanos and the music of the plays. I think we're going we to stop shortly after this section because we are already at 55 minutes. But it's Saturday, right? But I can't really say that long because we got something planned for the kids today. The Shakespearean plays are intensely musical and the focus on music in the plays suggests that their author came from an environment that included some, some study of it. Most of the plays refer to music in their text and there are in total more than 300 musical stage directions. The plays incorporate about 100 ballads, popular songs, and other secular music. In the early history plays, the musical references tend to be limited to flourishes of trumpets, drums, and alarms, such as in Trollius and Cressida. However, by the middle period, the plays began to incorporate more sophisticated music, such as the consort of mixed instruments in Midsummer Night's Dream and the use of Heart Boys in Anthony and Cleopatra. This increasingly, sophist this increasingly sophistication leads to the integrated use of ballads in The Winter's Tale. As Ross Duffin has pointed out, the playwright also uses song titles as literary puzzles. For instance, for instance, the character Rogero in The Winter's Tale is intended to remind the audience of a ballad by that name and thereby bring up the imagery of a jealous husband who killed his wife. Reference 65. Many of the songs used in the Shakespearean plays can be seen as autobiographical to Emilia Bassano. The heroine, the heroine of the song Oyster Pie, mentioned in Taming of the Shrew, there's a Roman numeral, four, four, Taming of the Shrew, Act Four. What is it? No. Act four, line two. Yeah, act four, line two. Ghost, hold on, let me just read it over. The heroine of the song Oyster Pie, mentioning in Taming of the Shrew, act four, verse two, goes to church not for devotion's sake, but to spy out the one who will be her true love. The female subject of the high hole for a husband Mention in Much Ado About Nothing. Hey, three. guess what? Oh, you talking to me now, Mr. Murphy? You pregnant. I am not pregnant. <laughs> At number seven. Here he go with his shenanigans. Put it on the wall, Jack. At the number up. The female subject of high hope for the a husband. female subject. No, I'm just... <laughs> Mention in Much Ado About Nothing. Hold up, wait a minute, we want this big train. Act three, line four, and act two, you line one. You said, am I talking to you? I, I just you spoke talk... to you this morning, babe. You talk to me like I was some Stop. woman on the street. Stop. Call it now. Stop. He said, Stop. Pam. Now listen. No, I didn't say Pam, I said babe. No, you no, did I... it. You called me by my name. Babe, you went in there and took your, your teeth. You <clears> said <throat> Pam. Are you babe, cooking breakfast said, this morning? I said, I'm babe. like, oh, you calling me Pam. Like, 
right, go ahead. I feel some type of way. Like that's my my name. It's not derogatory, but I'm like, oh, he called me by my name. Some is wrong. Like you didn't get no name. We we shouldn't get mad when they call us by name because that is our name. We love our name. We love the sound of our name. When you call me by my name. No, it, I'm not it, pregnant. Nah, they saying it, congratulations. Is it by, your name? Is it by Look, your name or is it the tone that's spoken? It's both. Your... It's both. No, nah, which one is it? It's both. It can't be Pam. I mean, come you on. You should what's only it? be saying my name when you're describing who I am. My wife, Pamela. But. Oh, got you. Okay. I can take, I'll take that one. All right. Just like if I'd have been like, okay, James, you know. Um, is it no? Um, <laughs> okay, but I understand. I understand where you're going with it. But we had a little dispute. <laughs> but if it's not how it's said, it's how it's received. Just remember. That. I think it's a bit of both, Mr. Murphy. <laughs> it is. If I could roll my eyes harder, oh, I would geez. roll them off this screen. Go ahead and finish reading your dog home. <laughs> Uh, Shakespeare theory. Um, I mean, we could go all night. You know that. This mm-hmm. is just what. It ain't nothing. Uh, Jake, look, Jake. What we do. This Jake, is what we do. Uh, Uncle JB, uh, happy rising. He said, "Oh wow, congratulations." I'm not pregnant. She don't. Listen, like people say, congratulations. Listen, listen, like they I'm, like. But listen though, listen, my husband is a jokester. Listen, like listen, y'all listen. see me acting crazy sometimes. <laughs> my husband is like but pure listen, comedy in my house don't all day long. Do, Go ahead. It's stop. What the fuck? Father want to bless. For, uh, yeah, I see. We have this <laughs> conversation live. <laughs> I can no, tell you what my husband gonna say. Don't put your mouth on something. <laughs> Children are blessed. Don't baby. put your mouth on something. Stop cursing. People curse themselves. I'm not cursing because of myself. what they say out their mouth, and okay. everybody know it. But guess what? They just can't stop doing it. You gotta stop it, and you gotta talk blessings. Yes. Let me fix my creativity. Mouth. Put my eyes back in my face. Into your life. Stop Bring it in. Eyes. Bring it all in. Let me just keep my eyes. Because after you get off of this. Can y'all see me rolling my do? eyes under my eyelids? Oh my God. Come on, come on. <laughs> 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 all right, go ahead. I'm done. Uh, why are you always trying to impregnate me? Because <laughs> <clears throat> you're impregnatable. Do you know <laughs> how long another. It's an investment. That thing. Of, I look at this. But think it about is. this. What, what I always say to you. What I always say Because to you. I nurse, if there's a two-year attachment is, listen, to my physical listen, body. If money is not an object. I'm 43 years old. Wait a minute. Away. Listen, I'm what I always say. I'm about to be 43. What I always say. If money is not an object, mm-hmm. imagine how many people mm-hmm. would really live out, live out their dreams. If money is not the object. Well, I agree with that. But, but then when I hold back. They wouldn't. Because they're used to it. It's not that they will abuse it. They're not going to abuse it. Mm-hmm. Imagine the life of some people. They will really live out their <laughs> dreams, honestly. James said she says it when she's pregnant, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Look here. Look, Trina, we got to get with you and this, you and your husband. We got to go out and do good <clears throat> or something. So we'll send y'all we got to get an event. Let's, let's get something yeah. jumping. But anyway, think about it. Um, this gonna be the end of my reading here, y'all. You come think, downstairs think, and get really me all sidetracked and stuff. Think about it. Thank you, Jake. Whose side are you on? <laughs> Man, listen, listen. But think about he it. He said, "Be look. careful." It's still ladies having babies in their forties left. Yeah, it is, but I mean, the thing is this. My my daddy always told me this. Honestly, mm-hmm. you know, what I have to do is be considerate mm-hmm. of my wife only because she's the one caring. I'm not carrying the child. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. I'm Thank not. you. So we be considered. Dad, my daddy like always it. have said that. Mm-hmm. Quit being selfish, boy, and think about that woman. Guess what? I am thinking about it. That's the reason why I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> this is the end of our reading today. <laughs> uh, let me I'm find trying my to get sticker. Bella somebody that she can play with. I want to get her. A you know how many cousins, female cousins, she got? It ain't the same, Jack. Blessed Listen. be my sister's wombs. It we is. had all boys. She had all girls. She got playmates. I got one more. I got another sh- bullet in the chamber, and it's coming out running. I'm telling you, 
It's coming out hot, fast. But anyway, it's already, it's already, you keep on talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not joking. He is absolutely not joking. I'm joking. Right? <clears throat> like, he's really serious. Like, but he's listen, on hold a on, mission. Wait. If you're going to tell a little bit of the truth, tell the whole truth. What's the whole truth? And what we, you, and we, what you be saying? What? And what? What I, what I be saying? Ain't no shame in my game. What I be saying? Tell it. We gonna turn this into a marriage counseling session? Let's go. What you say? Let's go. What I say? What I say? <clears throat> you wanna be pregnant? When did I say that? Oh, I Was I right. in my right sense? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. <laughs> no, you cannot hold those words against me at that time. <laughs> Bye, you just get off the line. Goodbye. Off. No, no, no. Look, you've been wondering why 20 this years. Is, all right, cool. uh, Lord have mercy. Is that all y'all do I all day it? long? When do y'all ever have a chance to get business done? Yo, in between <laughs> anyway, business. Yo. All right, it's up, it's up. All day, every day. Enough is enough. It was enough laugh. Go ahead and bless the people. We got to get out of here. Got things to do. We got things to get up and do to it. <laughs> Robert said, he said, uh, James, I'm working on uh, getting Trina pregnant, too. <laughs> hey, work on it, boss. Let's get this thing together. Wrap it up, baby. Let's get oh. it. Hey, hey. Uh, oh, you about to get him Let's hype get over here. Oh, my god. It's gosh. happening. I call in the habit. It's going to happen ASAP. Y'all know what happened. Was y'all pregnant? I mean, not pregnant. Was y'all present? See, you got me Look in my words. Look at that, boy. I tell you, the them, last few children, if y'all have been present for my I videos, I don't even stop my videos when I go into the hospital to have a baby. We're doing the lives from oh, the hospital. She is beautiful. Look I introduce y'all to the baby and everything. <laughs> and this is the that's baby. Her, that's, that's her playmate right there. What's her name, Tootie? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I forgot baby. what you What's named her name? her. What's her name? Doll. Doll. You call her okay. Doll. Doll. Okay. All right, right y'all. That 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 is. We nice. have a surprise today. We're doing Yay. something wonderful today. We're so excited. Yay, yay. We're so excited. Yay, yay. I don't know. Uh, we know. Yeah, we don't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, y'all. This this is this this is I enough. All right. All right, but yes, chill. Look. It's I do. Murphy take over. I really do. I love children. I really do. Hence, I, I wouldn't have six. And we would actually have seven had I not had a, a ectopic pregnancy it's back coming. in 2010, yeah. right? It's we coming. would have seven, yeah. right? But we if said... Period, we'll, if, 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 your, if your girl lady hasn't came in about a month or two... I keep tabs but on you, sis. I do too, and she ain't came. Like, because we got a new moon and everything, oh, sis. Oh, God. We, we, we in alignment is. with the stars and the clock. The now is just not a river in Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> God. I am not in denial, oh, but as I'm getting older, it's a little bit harder to get this body weight off of me. Granted, Bella is five, and this is not just baby it's fat. Not, no, it's not. It's not our normal two-year <laughs> increment. Oh yes, right. Because if y'all know me, y'all know I was pregnant every two years. After the second one, every two years, popping out a baby, right? And I'm shocked. Thank you to the thank you to the, the the one who did it. I mean, never mind. Go ahead. The Father in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> and on earth. <laughs> and the Father here on earth, Mr. Murphy. Nah. Thank you. Hey, um, but no, nah, it's it's. <clears throat> But no, nah, man, go ahead and bless the people, man. We can do this all night. You know that. Yeah, we can. We gonna have to start our own like marriage show. Marie uh, said, "Yo, you guys are hilarious." Your husband said, oh, "It's man. coming out hot." <laughs> she said, "I'm done." <laughs> Ugh, this is just the tamed version <clears throat> of our conversations. Like, this is the tamed version, y'all. All right, y'all. Let's get out of here. Thank you for joining me today for today's reading. It is November the sixth. 2021. So you can disrupt. Day 295. You can disrupt. And 95. Let me focus, Pam. Year 3. <laughs> Day 295. That year is about three. to go down. Of reading it's through the books to go down, baby. and the prophets <clears throat> of the three year consecutive day count. Day 963. <laughs> <laughs> we read Psalms. 74 through 76. I love it. I 
I love it. We read Shakespeare's Secret Messiah, page 146. So where I stop at? Good morning. It's page 151. All right, beautiful people. Let's go ahead and uh, let's do blessing. I, 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 I think I see it. Everything I was supposed to say. Man, take that thing. What? The thing got roaches. What? Why y'all bring the thing in the house? I'm joking. She ain't got roaches. What are you talking about? I'm joking, man. I just never, you know, we ain't bought that. That's Simba. It don't look like, but anyway. (laughs) Go brush your, wash your face and brush your teeth, man. Oh, I tell you. The shenanigans, there is no Um, end to the shenanigans. Look like (laughs) Molly. I know Simba. <laughs> like who? Nala. <laughs> uh, so he talking oh. about this lion. My uh, oh. my niece gave to my son one of her stuffed animals. You know, she getting what rid of stuff. That's like, oh, can I have it? It was a lion from Lion King. With we trying Simba. to get rid of stuff. You know, kids and their stuffed animals and stuff. Yeah. Hey, let me see. All right, oh, y'all. She about to go swimming. I like that. The blessing is found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. Tutu, we're about to do the blessing. Like oh, wow, and Yahuwah like spake unto Moses, saying, oh, yeah, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, Yahuwah will kneel before us, presenting gifts, and guard us with a hedge of protection. Yahuwah will illuminate the wholeness of his being towards us bringing order, and he will provide us with love, sustenance, and friendship. Yahuwah will lift up his wholeness of being and look upon us, and he will set in place all we need to be whole and complete. And they shall put my like name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. All right, beautiful people. That Go out, be it. fruitful, and have babies. Enjoy your day <laughs> as is- if it was your last. Cause guess what? what? We are. <laughs> that is the end <laughs> of our yeah. sitcom show. It's the Murphys for today. <laughs> All right, y'all. Shalom, Yesav, everybody. All right, love y'all. Yeah. See y'all yeah. tomorrow, bright and early, seven thirty a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You ready to eat, mom? Be- Shrina said we cracking up at y'all. Yo, Start ready, planning mama? the play dates. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, it's called Have Baby Dates. Bella, go ahead and end this video. Come on, Come look. On, look go ahead and end the video. Right All right, y'all.